Hello everybody, it's Suzette Birnon and I am so happy to welcome you to the Enough Factor Podcast. If this is your first time, a heartfelt welcome, I always appreciate your stopping by. I also want you to know what we stand for. Our mission is to help you redefine what makes you enough in life and in love on your own terms. We do it by amplifying three critical factors. We call them three critical factors of enoughness, your voice, your value, and your vision. It's also for women who once prided themselves on being high achieving, but understand that their high achievement was built on trying to earn what they already are. You are enough. And so I've decided that instead of high achieving women, I'll refer to you as next level women. Next level women aren't trying to prove anything. They already know who they are and are running towards that next level life that they envision. It's the month of the man, y'all. For the entire month of June, we are amplifying the voices of black men, offering them a safe place to express their frustrations, their fears, their experiences in the wake of racial disparities and the fight for justice. In fact, this episode is being brought to you by Do You Speak Male? The Five C's of Understanding a Man's Language. For the next level woman who is ready to up-level her relationships. For more information, go to bit.ly forward slash his language. And I'm so honored to have with me a wonderful man. His name is Sean Rogers. Sean is a charismatic entrepreneur who is passionate about serving others. Since 2008, he has owned Response Marketing and Mailing, a print fulfillment and direct mail advertising company where he helps clients grow their business. As a business owner, he is able to do what he wants when he wants. So at his place of business, Sean facilitated a weekly men's forum in order to give men the opportunity to connect and share heart and life issues with one another like men are accustomed to doing at the barbershop. Sean has also volunteered his time with the Fatherhood Project by mentoring young men at the Juvenile Detention Center. He helped young fathers facing life sentences acknowledge and accept their role and responsibility in their child's life. And he currently facilitates men's groups held at his church, leading discussions surrounding father wounds and pride. So without further delay, please join me in welcoming Sean Rogers to Enough Factor Podcast. Sean, it's so great to meet you and to welcome you to the Enough Factor Podcast. It's been a heck of a couple of weeks, hasn't it? Yes, it has. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Even before we hit the record button, I'm telling you, y'all, Sean was ready to jump in with both. And I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me hit. We got to we got to capture this energy because you said something very profound. You said it's about listening versus just talking, you know, just being heard, but really being listened to. Yes. And that was what I'm endeavoring to do with this platform to give, to lend it to voices like yours so that you can just say what you need to say and not feel like somebody's going to parcel it, piece it apart and make it less than what it is. So please feel free to just share your thoughts of how it has felt to you over these last couple of weeks as a black man. (laughs) Well, first of all, let me thank thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak and be uh I'm a I'm a change it but be heard. Um, but I will uh go into that in depth about being heard. But I just want to thank you for this platform because a lot of us men need this. Um I know this it, it, and it's crazy because I know um 
Father's Day is coming. Mm -hmm. And it hurts to see George Floyd not going to be able to spend his time with his kids. And if you didn't know him, but if you hear the words that people are saying, he was a God-fearing man. So um, me talking is to the point where I, I'm tired of being heard because hearing, I can hear a siren, I can hear a helicopter, that's being heard. You know what I mean? I can hear cars going across my street or people walking, across, walking or jogging and talking. I hear that. But to me, please listen to us. Listen to us because we're just not crying, <laughs> but we're screaming and crying. We are hurt. And as a, a, a black man, just I really just look in death of his, his death is like Father's Day is coming up. And now his kids don't even get to celebrate that with him. And being at a young age, I don't know what how old his kids are, but I think they're kind of fair, fairly young. So they didn't even get to know that man. They did not get to know that man. They're not going to get to know him. No. And you're right. It's like, it is screaming. It's like screaming. Please listen. And I, and I, I'm not an advocate of destroying property, right. but at the very same time, what else do you expect when right. people have been screaming for so long, you know, and, and no matter how much, it's almost like you'll do enough to say, okay, okay, just enough to make you stop screaming. Okay. Okay. Just enough, you know, just enough to stop, make you stop screaming. But but you're not changing what's Anything. causing the screens. Right. You know? And, right, right. And up to the point, stop pacifying me. You don't got to put the baby th in my mouth to make me stop crying or make, no. Stop pacifying me. Stop patting me on the back. I don't want that anymore. I want some change in, 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 in the life that I'm living. You know, and I hear people say that I um they're scared for their children and and their children and 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 I me too. But I'm also scared of for my life. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I own my own business, but I get I'm now I'm getting scared to get in my car. I'm by myself and thinking you gonna pull me over for what reason? What for what? I, I roll down my windows for you can see me. You know, so um, it's, I am very like hurt. <laughs> I can't even say frustrated anymore because I'm just hurt. I'm hurt for the, the, the up top or our leaders up top. And, 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 and that goes trickle down from president and everything else. I'm just hurt that you got, they don't have compassion you know, they want to, and, and then the media wants to change everything. Well, they're looting, they're doing this and it, but let, okay, let's get back to George, Walt, George Floyd. Floyd. Yes. Let's get back from the kid in Atlanta. You know, we didn't have three deaths in what, 30 days? Yeah. Cause I, there was also the um, first responder. Wasn't she shot in her home? Was right. she? It, she was shot in her home. We've had so many. We had the other gentleman, I can't remember his name, but the gentleman who was shot by the female police officer in his own home. Oh. Then you had a lady in Texas, too, that was uh, playing her game, and the officer seen her moving and just shot her in Texas. Just shot her. And I don't know the outcome. I've been trying to do research to find out what happened. But why do I need to find out research? Because they put everything else on the news. They put the uh, these uh, skewed blood and crips out here. They didn't shot somebody or did a drive-by. 
but we don't see the effect of when they shoot us or like, let's take, it was, I think three years ago where the man got on his back in the middle of the street, put his hands up and said, I don't have nothing. And they shot him anyway. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm to the point where, okay, enough is enough. But and then also, I want to tell our people enough is enough. Okay, I get the looting and every, and I'm not, but I don't condone that. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to the basics of us, of us. And to me, getting back to the basics is unifying us uh, back. Because I know, because I know you know, <laughs> back in our day, the village raised yeah. And I mean, we to my I can still count how many neighbors I had. If my mom was working a double shift, I wasn't alone in my house. You know, mm -hmm. I can go to the next door and I can eat there or I can go down the other street or I can borrow some eggs. I can borrow sugar. I can do that. And I think that's where we're not consistent as a people yeah. is is being unified. We find every other excuse that hate this person or hate this person. And, 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 and I mean, me and my wife had talked. She said, well, every culture is not unified, but we're, we're, <laughs> we're the ones with the target on our backs. <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, I understand all that, but I was thinking, I said, black lives is becoming an endangered species. It really is. It is. You know, it really is. Yeah, we we're they making us be uh, come like uh, 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 the polar bear in Alaska and, 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 and stink. You know what I mean? Yeah. We are becoming, you know we and, and it's funny because we're scared to have kids now. You know, it's it's terrifying to have a newborn in this type of world. Yeah, I was thinking about my grand twins. They're, they just turned three years old. Cute as everything. Little boys. And it just breaks my heart because I'm like, God, I don't want them to inherit this right here. Yes. I don't want them to inherit this. I don't, I don't want, there was a video where uh, there was a, uh, some protesters. I wish I could find that video where a gentleman was talking to a younger black boy. Yes. Yes. And he was saying, this is going to be you in 10 years. And I don't want this to be you in 10 yes. years. Yes. So think, figure it out. Your generation needs to figure it out because, you know, it's like we, we, we at the end of ours, but it's up to you. You got to figure this out. So that in the next 10 years, this won't be you. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, that's, I mean, we look at, <laughs> It's it, it. This one is like. I mean, all of it has hit home, but yeah. this one was. I, I don't know why is a little bit different. Maybe because we seen a man that didn't have no compassion for life. Period. He he yeah. didn't. You know. And and then I want. I and then I'm like, okay, resisting arrest. What is that? So if I say, forget you, or why are you arresting me? Is that a zissing arrest? Exactly. You know, when, if, when, if, yeah, when is, is, is saying, look, why are you doing this? Right. How is that resisting arrest? How is that resisting arrest? And if you look at the video, it was three people in the car. They let two people out of the car. And then kept George Wallace in the car, then try to arrest him. George, so, George Floyd, Floyd. Floyd. You said George Wallace. <laughs> he was oh, like, no, I want in that car. Can you, I can only imagine <laughs> George cussing. Car. I can <laughs> imagine him cussing right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And making him laugh. I mean, I mean, but <laughs> what was this? Where was the resistant arrest at? Because what I seen. What every the the world seen, where was this this in arrest? If I even called you a name, how's that this in arrest when my hands is behind my back? What is where is this this in arrest when I'm calling for my mother? Uh -huh. Where is this this in arrest when I'm saying I can't breathe? Where is this this in arrest when when I'm just I'm uh, my face is pent on a on a black ground? 
probably that was hot and, and, and I can't breathe. So where is this, this and the rest? So this is where I'm talking about. Stop, stop. See, he just heard. He just heard the uh, I can't breathe. But if you would have listened to that man, you probably would have had some type of compassion, but you didn't even have no compassion. And the three officers that was around him didn't even have compassion of this man's life. I think that's the part that has really, we, we've heard about other things, and but it was something about this that just broke it, just broke it open to literally whoever captured it to literally sit there and watch that. Right. It, you know, it's almost like, cause even um, the gentleman that was jogging in the neighborhood. Right. You know, we, we saw that too. And, and it's not that one death is more important than the other. No. It's, it's the, it's the in your face compoundedness of it where you you you're looking at something and you're going how is this possible what's going on and it's at a distance you you can kind of you hear the pop pop of the guns but you don't actually see it right that make it less but you kind of still kind of remove but to look at this person to watch it happening up close I, I, my heart, I, I still, when they play it on the news, my heart can't take it, Sean. Yeah. My heart cannot take it. Yeah. It really can't take it. And, I, and I'm concerned even as a, a coach because one of the things that I'm, I'm launching is called Do You Speak Male? The five C's of understanding a man's language. And what has been coming to my mind, because my platform, my solution rather, is for women. Right. To help yes. women to understand uh, men. Exactly. Right. And so I've been thinking about what, what is it like for a black man to have to go outside of his home, deal with this kind of situation, and then come into his own community where women are saying, black men ain't this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or pointing to a man and saying, you're the reason why my life is jacked up. You're the reason why this is happening. And to see a, a generation of women and, and know this because I'm a strong woman too. I'm a mission-driven woman, a, a next level woman. But since when was the next level, I don't need you. Right. Because <laughs> it's almost like dub a double whammy. It is. For men. How I can't imagine how that feels when you hear even black women, even people saying, We don't need you either. We got and, and, this. I mean, yeah, we can have the doctor degrees or masters. I mean, I know it goes the masters and doctor degrees and all that, but my thing is get to know the man, get to know his struggle. One thing I love about my wife, she knows my struggle. And I guess one of it is I have been honest to her also that I live in a life that every day is a fight. Every day. Even though I'm not in the army or the, 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 the service or anything else, I feel like every day I, I wear fatigues. That I gotta, I gotta be I got to carry a rifle and everything because I got to protect myself, you know, every day. Uh, and and, and I, like I said, I, I I have talked to many of cultures. When I was younger, I spent the night at Jewish people houses and all that. I learned, I've been about misfits when I was 14 years old. You know, I, I did all this stuff. Thank you for my mother for giving me the, you know, for just showing me different life and, and not keeping me in, in in or confined in my neighborhood. I love for that. I mean, I went to vacations. I went to Brazil when I was young. You know, I, I did, but coming back home is like every day you had to fight for who you are. And, and that's just not even 
the to the white folks or anything. Just in my neighborhood, because I talked a little different, because I hung out with, like I said, different races. And oh, people used to you talk white or you talk like this. And that's in my own neighborhood. So I always felt that, like, how am I going to win? Where am I going to win? If my neighborhood is already keeping me down or I see some friends going down the right path where we call the big homies or the big friends, you know, instead of them trying to lead us to the right, you're trying to lead us to the left and then put us in, put us somewhere where we don't need to be. And I thank God for the strong minded people that went to, you know, the, the, the right path and everything. But what about the person that didn't have the dad that, again, that, that had father wounds, you know what I mean? Or because their dad wasn't there. And that's one, one thing that people don't understand. As a black man, we have father wounds. I didn't learn how to cry till about, what, uh, seven years ago when I finally lost my father. Well, when I lost my grandfather two years ago, 20 or 20 plus years ago, he was my dad. Because my dad wasn't around at the time. And when I finally had lost my grandfather, I'd never seen my grandfather cry. Even when I was with my dad at the time, I never even seen him cry. I never even seen how to give emotions. You know, I didn't know how to react. So being a black man, we're so, so impressed that this is what you're seeing with the looting and everything, you know, with, with, there's been, like you said, eight weeks of being confined in your house. And I've been had, what was it? Like I said, three deaths in 30 days. We're outraged. We're tired. We're, we're, we're so, like I said, they keep hearing us, but they're not listening to us. And so when we tear up things, you guys now want to respond. And that's where we at. So I got to tear up something for you to listen to. Mm. So for, for a man, and, and, I, and I'm going to get away from the black man, for a God-fearing man, that, that, that I, 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 if you listen to our podcast, I put God in front of everything, in front of my marriage, in front of my kids, in front of even me. To see and witness this one is like, wow. Is this what they think of us? Yeah. You see us, okay, you see us as the athlete, or you see us as an entertainer, and then you praise us and you love us, but you don't love, this is this is crazy. I, I forgot who I heard say this. You love the culture of Black folks, but you don't love Black folks. I saw that too. How I profound that is that? That was profound. You love our culture. Right. But you don't love us. You don't love us. Mm -mm. And, you know, it's interesting because um, I I love watching Red Table Talk on Facebook (laughs) with Jada Pinkett Smith. I love it. And um, she had, they were talking about colorism. That was the last episode about colorism you know, skin color, even among our own community and how that has really um, caused a lot of wounding, even in our in our community, light skin, dark skin, good hair, bad hair, the whole thing and how that how that's playing out. But she one of the things that I I saw, too, was she brought Sandra Bullock. Okay. on because Sandra Bullock has adopted a black son and a black daughter. And I looked over at my husband and I said, you know what? People who are adopting black children or they are having conjugal uh, visits across races (laughs) (laughs) and producing multiracial, biracial children, biracial rather children, They need to understand that when their child is away from them, 
Yeah. They're going to be treated like you and me. Right. Yes. And if you don't, you cannot love them into a different experience. You can't even give them all the wealth and all the whatever and keep them around your celebrity friends and your white friends and your whatever. You By doing that, you're doing a disservice to that child because when that child leaves your presence, Yes. They're yes. going to have to deal with what you and I are talking about right, right this now. minute. And it's sad. Different ones are saying, oh, I fear for my children. I said, I fear for my child, for your child when you had it. When <laughs> right. You had the biracial child I, child. I feared for your child. Not just because of what your child is going to inherit, but because of your naivete. Right. You're setting that child up yes. because of your naivete. Yes. And I think this is a wake up call even for those those that have had biracial children, those in biracial marriages and and and, and relationships, those who are adopting children of color. It is a responsibility that you have to prepare your child. You do. Not just so they hair don't look all crazy. Because I, <laughs> I look at some of these children, I'll be looking like, Lord. <laughs> it's obvious you don't know how to deal with black hair. But it's, it take, you, you, you have to make the effort. Angelina Jolie, yes, you got to learn about this. You do. Sandra Bullock, yes, you got to you learn do. about this because this is what your children are going to inherit. Right. That's you definitely know? true. So we were talking about that the other night. I said, you know, this is this is far reaching. This is this is far reaching. It's like a wake up call. There has to be a wake up call. All the way across the board, it's got to be a wake up call. It does. I mean, it it really does. I mean, if 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 listen, we like I said, we didn't had deaths for the last thirty days, but let's go back a couple of years ago. Then it, it's been every year that we didn't have something. So if if you're not looking at this and and understand that you need to teach your kids, then there's something wrong. We we especially as us. We cannot be pacified or pacify our kids anymore. We can't go around the Mario Bush thing because I make $250,000 a year or I make a million dollars a year that this doesn't exist because it does. It does. They, they, and, 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 and I, I want to go a little, I, I get kind of mad like I hear on on the news, oh thank you God or uh uh oh Father God thank what Bible are you guys reading that 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 uh tells you about hate? You go hate me. What Bible are you reading that makes you hate me because of the color of my skin? What Bible are you reading that that you judge me because I might sag my pants down or whatever? Listen, I have a, a son that is 26 years old. And he wears he wears his pants not all the way down, but he kind of but my son graduated graduated at a Hampton Hampton University with a degree of aviation management. But you gonna see a young kid because he has his pants down, but you don't see that what he went through to get his education. Or my wife that has a master's degree, you know, and then, and, or my daughter that 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 has been since she, she had her daughter, been putting herself through school and everything. Got her AA now, working on her BA. But you don't see the struggles that we have been going through. But you just judge me of the color of my skin. But so that goes to the point where what Bible or what God? Are you serving to justify that you're supposed to hate me for the color of my skin? 
Yeah, and I and it's it's, it's interesting because I had a similar conversation prior to us uh, jumping on together about how diversity is celebrated in yeah. every other system. It's in, celebrated in nature. It's celebrated in all until it becomes race. And it's interesting because uh, nobody ever looks at a tree during the fall and looks at the red leaves, the brown leaves, the green leaves, the yellow leaves, and picks out, well, because you're not a red leaf, you don't count. No, people just say the leaves are turning. It's like they, they all, no matter what the colors, they're still looked at collectively as leaves. Right. And why is it that we can do that when it comes to nature? And nobody ever says, well, we own, you know, your dog is a lab, mine is a bulldog, the other one is a Jack Russell. Nobody ever looks at the dogs and says, well, this dog is better than that dog. We right. celebrate the diversity, the variety of the like species. That. But yet when it comes to humanity, Right, <laughs> right, right. I, I, you I think the zebra is beautiful. Yeah. We, you know, and, and I, it just baffles me that something as superficial as skin, which is going to go back to the very dust from which it came. Right. That we not, none of us are taking our skin with us. When you right. die, you don't take your skin with you. Right, that's just our shell. So something as superficial as that yeah. discredits everything else yeah. because my skin is just the house I live in. It's not who I am. Right. It's the house. It's the and house. God in his infinite wisdom and omniscience decided that putting different skin colors that seemed good to him. He looked at all of it and said, this is good. Right, right. The rainbow. He's like, this is good. Yes. We're the yes. ones that have decided that it's not. So again, to your point, what God are you serving? Right, <laughs> right. Because What, what I didn't, God? Right, because I didn't... I listen, especially the last couple of days, I've been in and out of this Bible trying to find other, and I'm like, so where do we where do we get to where we're hating each other? Where do where do we get to where a, a, a black lie doesn't matter? Where do we get where you think you can put your knee on my neck for nine minutes? Where do we get to the point where there's 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 kids walking down the street or a lady that's in our house playing her game that works every day and, and you just feel that you can kill her. What makes you when a man is running down in your neighborhood, he got short pants on and a t-shirt and you think you can kill him. And that's crazy because they, he, they, they was talking about, well, he was struggling. He was fighting for his life. Why run and you gonna shoot me in my back? That man was fighting for his, his life. life. He was yeah. fighting for his mind. And I don't so, understand that because my thing was, the way I was looking at it is, okay, you don't like me wherever it is I am that you feel like I shouldn't be. Right. So you go get a gun and you follow me. And when I turn around and I'm like, look, hey, like you said, fighting for my life, then you say, oh, you provoke me right no you had it in your mind you provoked me right so that you could have a reason the reason to yeah. shoot me right so I I, I I i i don't i don't sean i it it boggles my mind and you know what it's supposed to it is this is not normal it's this not. is not natural this goes against everything that is good about humanity. It's it's supposed 
it's supposed to boggle our minds. It's supposed to cause us to, to scream. It it's is. It's supposed to. It is, because it, it's a wake up. Like you said earlier, this is a wake up. We need to now start being consistent of what we need to do. We can't, we cannot keep going, okay, two months later, and uh, let's sweep it under the bridge. We cannot keep doing that. This needs to be an everyday struggle. It's like going to church on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is what we need to be doing every day. Okay, yeah, we can watch the basketball games and the football games, but we need to be at the meetings, the hometown meetings, the home the hall town meetings. We need to be present. We need to, uh, like we said, voice needs to hurt, be heard. If we can't be heard, if we watching the Lakers play, we need to be at the PTAs, whatever it is, or go see who your senator is when they throw in the meeting. We need to learn how to vote. Don't because uh, we didn't like Hillary. Oh, uh, I'm not gonna vote. But do you know there was more on your ballot that need to be voted for? Do you know you, the, the prosecutor? He gets voted in. So why are we voting? And, 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 and black folks, please listen to me. We all have kids or relatives that have been in jail, been prosecuted with years that just doesn't make sense. Why? Because we're not standing up. We're not out there voting. I, I don't want to hear, well, I don't want to vote because I don't like both of them. But there's other things on that ballot that you need to vote for. So educate yourself. When that ballot comes in, please educate yourself to know who you need to vote for. I don't care if you don't vote for the president, but in your city, in your town, there needs to be people out of their chairs. Like I hear, oh, it gets me all the time. When Obama was in and, and, and our black folks were like, well, he didn't do nothing to us, for us. How could he? Because you didn't vote nobody in the House and the Senate for him to do anything. You just voted for him. So please, and, and, and we've been talking about this long, long, but now it's about, ed listen, it's about educating yourself to the fullest. I don't care what degrees you have, but we need to educate the people that don't know how to vote. Please go sit down with them and help them out. Take time, we gotta take time for each other. We got, like I said, let's get back to that village that help each other because we're missing and we're lacking a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, and it says we shouldn't lack anything, but we're, as a people, are lacking a lot. Mm -hmm. And because one, we're not consistent with each other. Mm -hmm. We 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 want to hate each other because this, this person drives this or this person has this house. Yeah. Why don't we celebrate that? And then try to find out, because one of my things is, listen, I don't know much of nothing, but I'm willing to learn a lot. I'm willing to learn whatever you can give me. I am willing to learn how you got your doctor's degree. Please show me how to get it. They keep doing this to us because we're not consistent. Mm -hmm. We're not consistent. Our leaders, our churches, our, our, our everything about us. I, and, and I'm and, and I'm sorry, entertainment world to athletes to me to me, Sean Rogers. I have not been consistent of putting my foot forward every day to make us better. All right, what about Kaepernick? You know, we've been talking about him. Yeah, and, and it's funny because you know I, I look at Kaepernick. This is something he started, and we didn't even take heed to it. You know, we didn't We didn't actually, we kind of supported him, but we didn't. You know, we were like, hey, that's a black man standing up. That's cool. Okay. But this man lost his job because of that. Because of that. But he was making a valid point at the beginning of this. Just think if we would have been consistent back then, we wouldn't have had a George Floyd die or we wouldn't have had uh the guy in Atlanta if we would have just carried him through this finish line. So that's all I had to say on that. But we got to start recognizing what's what God is prevailing for us to us. Let me say so yes, consistency is the key. 
is to see is the key. I have to admit that too, uh, that I think what happens is we all get incensed and enraged by the atrocities against us and our, ooh, now it's like everything, we're protesting, we, we're doing our thing, we're writing our senators, we, we're demanding, we're demanding, we're doing our thing. But then it, it, it levels out and we go back to life as usual. And then something else has to happen. And here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. go. Then it levels out. And, and you're like, right. You're it's right. It's like the pandemic. It's like the pandemic. You're they right. shut, put a shut, so they can get a flat. They can get a flat. The flatten the curve. Mm-hmm. This is what they do to us now. When it when this happens, we get outraged. We get. We're ready to go. We got our spears in our hand. We're ready. But then they flatten that curve. curve. They smooth us. It's like patting the dog. They pat us a little bit. We kick put our legs up. Mm-hmm. And then we're done. Yeah, we're and done. You're, and right. I- you're right, Sean. We have to be consistent. That's the thing yes. that's missing, being consistent. It's like through ups, through downs, good days, bad days, sunshine, rain. Don't forget, don't, don't, don't end up being distracted. But right. understand the struggle is real and we have to be consistent. We can't okay. rest on our laurels because too many folk are dying. We too have many. to be consistent in the fight. We have to be consistent and, and fight in, in the ways that we can be effective. Right. I, knew, I know for me, me going out there with a picket sign, <laughs> that ain't going to push the needle. Not me. Right. Because because right. it's not the best use of my gift. My gift is my voice. Right. My gift is this platform. Right. That's going to go further than me holding a picket sign. But my thing is, whatever way you do it, because the picket signs, that, that's a part that needs to be, that's needed too. Yes. But I'm, I'm yes. saying it behooves all of us to take stock of what, our gifting is and our purpose is Long and time. what and what we have in our hand, what we influence. Right. And hone that toward the struggle, hone that toward illuminating, hone right. that toward educating, yeah. hone that toward teaching, like you were saying, teaching each other, coming together, not being crabs in a barrel. Right. And and if we do it consistently there is no way we can't turn this it is the titanic now so it's going to take it's it's going to take some time yeah but it's just like you remember i don't know if you watched this before i don't watch it often because it 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 wears me out but the brilliance of it is still great shawshank redemption okay yes that's a brilliant i can't watch it all the time but it's brilliant in that the character of the man that was falsely accused i can't remember what his name was right. but he's falsely accused and even though he's in the prison system and he's being treated badly he's being manipulated they're making promises to him he's helping folk with their bookkeeping he's been falsely accused about killing his wife he finds the person that does it but no they still won't let him out that man while everybody else is sleeping he's doing his he's work taking his picture down with a spoon Right. Digging himself out to freedom. And I said, you know what? If we as a people would take our spoon and, and just keep dig, keep working on it, keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. Eventually, we're gonna find our way out. Yeah, we and and that's oh thank you. <laughs> yes, and that's what and I was just talking to a friend talking about the marathon, uh, or a hundred, a hundred yard dash. See, we so used to running at hundred because we so quick and we can get there like that. Mm-hmm. We got to learn how to run the marathon and not just the 26 miles. You got to add, say a hundred, a hundred times 26, whatever that is, that's the marathon. We need to learn how to run. If it's over a hundred and something miles, we need to learn how to run that type of race. This is not a short sprint no more. This ain't short. This ain't just going to school and getting your education and and thinking I'm going to be okay. No, this is, we got a whole lot of people 
that needs our help to learn how to run this type of race. And 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 like I said, with George Floyd, <laughs> <laughs> this is where the breaking point. This is where we kind of tipped. This is the teeter totter. Now we're just on one side, and we we can't go back anymore. Can't do it. We can't go back, and we can't keep looking back. Mm -mm. Can't because mm -mm. God can't has already it. go tell us. You look back, I'm gonna turn you to a pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because every time it happens now, it escalates. It's almost like hate is emboldened. Every yeah. time, every time we we calm down, every time we fall asleep at the wheel, it's like. The crimes are getting more and more yeah. intrusive, more and more bold. Like, like, yeah, record it. Yeah, I got my, I got my knee on this person's neck. Record it. Yeah, go ahead. I'll look right, right at you. Right. And that was the part that I was just like, I could not, I could not fathom that. So, so, Sean, what is it that as a black man? you want to say to our listeners as we bring this conversation to a close okay what do you want them to hear from your heart what is it okay. you want one, as a man of god a black man i just want you to know we can't stop we cannot stop and i don't want to hear listen i don't i don't what you have on your shirts enough is enough i can't breathe and everything that should not now two weeks later be tucked in and you put it in your drawer that's something you need to almost like having magic johnson's uh jersey on your wall you need to see that every day so that gives you conviction to go out and fight the right fight fight the good fight we need consistency we need and, and, and I don't want to keep saying, oh, we need leaders. We need this. No, we need everybody voice being heard or listened to. I'm tired of being saying heard. I want to be listened to. So sit down like a uh, uh, killer Mike rapper, whatever his name is. He said, plot, plan, strategize, organize, and mobilize. To me, that's like playing chess. You got to learn how to play chess because these people are, you. we playing checkers. These people are playing chess. They strategize in their lives, their organizations, their money, to the, the, the defeat us. And we, we got to get away from the division. We got to get to the unity, the oneness, and, and, and just stay strong. We're going to have to fight, but we got to stay strong. Mm -hmm. We're going to fight to win. We're going to fight to win. Got to fight to win. If, if I go down, I'm going down fighting to win. Yes. And just like you said earlier, like I now I know my gifting. My gifting ain't writing and all that. My gifting is my voice. And and like I said, I, I, I thank you for this platform. And, I, and, and, and people, please find a platform to talk, to get your voice listen to. I'm changing the merit of, I want my voice to be heard. They've been hearing us for 400 years. They've been hearing us last month. Listen to me and talk with, with and I don't care how you talk. You can talk intelligent with, with, with malice, with, but just talk. We don't need, we don't need the looting. We don't need that. We don't need it. We have we had one, two, three, four days of it. Okay, now let's stop. Let's get a plan together. Let's 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 stand together. Cause there's it, and it's just not us. There's a whole culture that is tired too. They're tired of seeing it too. That woke yeah. people up. Yeah, I've gotten more emails yes. from people I never expected that I maybe might have listened to their webinar people of different races. Yes. I've gotten emails because, you know, they send these blanket to the distribution list. And I might have gone to a web a virtual webinar or purchased a product, you know, to, toward growing my voice and everything. And I have to say I was pleasantly surprised that I'm seeing more and more 
emails coming from the most unexpected white people who are saying, I can't be silent. We can't. Be. They're, they're sending it to their massive distribution right. list and saying, right. we cannot condone this anymore. And if that means you're going to unsubscribe, if that means this is where you get off, that's fine. But we cannot sit back as white people and be silent when we're seeing this happening. I've seen it in my email like I have never seen it before. And even the images on TV of the police saying, well, what can we do? What can what can we do? And the persons and they're on their knee, they're taking the knee like Kaepernick and to watch mm. the people, the police, the SWAT teams taking a knee right. in solidarity with the struggle. <laughs> so y'all, all is not lost. Sure, this yeah. is a fight. Sure, this is a fight. But we can't miss the glimmers of hope that are happening around. Yes, a lot of things are happening that are terrible. But along with that, there are glimmers of light as well. It and is. so, so Sean, I thank you so much <laughs> for being seen. And we do care that you're your own people. Because sometimes I think black people, like I was saying, black men sometimes are not even seen in their own culture. But me as a black woman, it was important to me to say, I see you and what you say matters to me. And like I said, I surely, truly appreciate you. Thank you for this opportunity. This is awesome. Please keep up the good work because like you said, your voice it means a lot to a lot of people. You have just listened to the Enough Factor Podcast with your host, Suzette Bernard. To get notified of new episodes or to dig deeper into today's topic, become a subscriber. And while you're at it, tell us how we're doing and what topics you're interested in. We appreciate your feedback and your reviews. Until next time, remember, you are worthy, you are worth it, you are enough.